Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday. This week we're gonna be looking at the most effective exercises and training techniques for targeting the rear delt. But before we get into the movements themselves, let's have a quick look at the biomechanics and anatomy involved first. So the primary function of the rear delt is transverse shoulder abduction. Basically when you move your arm out to the side in the horizontal plane, like you would in a reverse fly, there's the same basic movement pattern that you'll see on the basic rowing variations like the pendlay row, where you have the arms moving out to the side as the elbow bends. So while the rear delts will be highly active in compound pulling exercises such as the row, EMG data from Button et al. shows that isolation exercises such as the reverse pec deck tend to outperform compound exercises like the seated row for the rear delts, which has led Dr. Brett Contreras to conclude that, quote, isolation exercises for the rear delts kick the shit out of compound exercises. So while you certainly can grow a decent set of rear delts by just doing heavy rows on their own, I think it's important to include some isolation exercises to really maximize their development. Now, another important but often neglected function of the rear delts is external rotation. So basically rotating your arm out Word. And because of this, I would say my single favorite rear delt exercise would have to be the rope face pull because it combines transverse abduction and external rotation. So there are two different ways you can set this up and they're both good, but we'll cover the main way first. So for this variation, you're gonna set the cable up at shoulder height and grab the handles with a neutral grip. So basically your thumbs should be in contact with the handles, not your pinkies. Take a stable stance a few feet back from the cable machine and slightly retract your shoulder blades so your upper back is in a nice and strong starting position. And from here, you wanna focus on driving your elbows back as you simultaneously pull the rope toward your forehead. And although this may happen naturally, you also want to think about depressing your shoulder blades throughout the positive. So basically think about tucking your shoulder blades down, which is also going to get some of the trap musculature involved and help keep the shoulder in a more secure lifting position. And the negative is essentially a reversal of the positive where you're going to let the rope come forward and down under control while keeping your shoulder blades in that secure position. And this variation is also great for strengthening the rotator cuff and it's a fantastic assistance exercise to include on a push day to help balance out the pushing demand on the shoulders and can help correct front to back shoulder imbalances and might actually help correct forward slouching posture issues as well. So for this variation, because we're isolating the rear delt and rotator cuff muscles, I like to use lighter weight for something around 15 to 20 reps. Okay, so another spin on this is to set the cable up at eye level and pull the rope straight back toward your chin without the external rotation component, but rather squeezing your shoulder blades together and driving the elbows back. And this variation on the face pull can be thought of as a high row, where you're essentially getting the traps and rhomboids more involved as well. And because this variation is getting more muscles in Involved, including the biceps as you pull the weight back, I prefer to load it a bit heavier, so more in the 12 to 15 rep zone. And I'll personally often do these half lying so I can brace my torso against the floor, allowing me to go heavier without losing balance. Now, not everyone has access to cables or a rope, and sometimes it's smart to just switch things up anyway. Now, so you can also do the face pull with dumbbells, where you bend over at the hips until you're close to parallel with the floor, keeping a natural arch in your lower back. And then you just copy the same basic movement pattern as the external rotation face pull where you pull your thumbs toward your ears. And whether you're doing these with dumbbells or the rope, one of the best cues I like to use is thinking about performing the movement as a rear double biceps pose where you're basically lifting your arms up and flexing your biceps from the back. So here we're doing the same basic thing except we're bent over and have dumbbells in our hands. One other exercise that I really like for the rear delts is the reverse pec deck. And as we saw in the EMG results from Button et al, the reverse pec deck shows the highest rear delt activation out of all the exercises tested. Although they didn't include a face pull, so maybe that would have been better, who knows. Uh, but with the reverse pec deck, you're basically locked into position. So you can do pure shoulder abduction without external rotation, which is nice for really isolating and burning out the rear delts. Now, interestingly, research from Sean Feld and colleagues found that using a neutral grip with the shoulders more externally rotated led to more activation of the rear delt, maybe because, as we already said, external rotation is one of the functions of the rear delt. Uh, but with that said, some subjects did see better results with the pronated or palms down grip, and I personally find I can get a better mind-muscle connection this way. So my best advice is to either 
periodically switch back and forth between a neutral and a pronated grip or go with what allows you to feel your rear delts firing the best. Uh, but either way, just like the cable variation, rounding your scapulae forward via protraction and thinking about swinging the weight out instead of back might help improve the mind-muscle connection with your rear delts. Now, another solid rear delt movement worth mentioning is the bent over reverse dumbbell fly. And I do like this movement. However, similar to the dumbbell chest fly, you run into the problem of reaching maximum tension when the dumbbells are furthest out to the sides at the top with tension then decreasing throughout the rest of the range of motion until there's just about zero tension on the rear delts at the bottom. So to work around this, I like to stop the dumbbells slightly short at the bottom and keep more of a constant tension groove going in about the top three quarters of the range of motion. And again, you wanna think about lifting the dumbbells out in an arc rather than back, which is gonna shift emphasis away from the traps and onto the rear delts. And as for grip position, again, you wanna pick a grip that feels comfortable for you. However, I find that a pronated palms down grip allows me to feel my rear delts firing the best. Now, I would say the most common error that I see with rear delt training is basically turning the movement into a row by retracting too much. Remember that to hit the rear delts, we need to be training transverse abduction so the arms should be swinging out to the sides not being pulled straight back so to really target the rear delts optimally it is important that you pay close attention to your form and slow the movement down as much as needed until you get the mind muscle connection right. So typically just going lighter and paying closer attention is gonna fix this issue. Okay, so guys, that is all that I have for training technique for the rear delts. If you guys haven't seen my shoulder science explained video, I'd recommend giving that a watch. That's a little bit of an older video, but all of the information is still very relevant. Um, so you can check that out and you can also check out my upright row video if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on that exercise. A lot of people seem to have missed that video. So I'll put links to both of those over here and you can check them out. Uh, please leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future Technique Tuesday episodes. And I'll see you guys all here next Tuesday.